make disciples. Hey, I hope you're having an amazing week. Um, remember, what we do in Bible Fellowship Ministry, we reach, teach, care, and multiply. Last week, we talked about some ways you can teach a little better. This week, I want to talk to you about caring for your class, and I want to take it from maybe a little different perspective that we've taken from it uh, before. I get to teach a Bible Fellowship class, and as the pastor of discipleship, a lot of my job is trying to help people reach their potential. And so I think lots of times in Bible fellowship class, we teach well, we study well, we prepare well, and then we give maybe even people some things they need to live out in their lives. But one thing I don't know if we do well is, is give personal coaching to people in your class. Given, uh, we talked about having a class mission statement. I know a lot of your classes really ate that up and really had that class mission statement. But have you helped people in your class personally grow in their faith. So the big idea I want to talk about today is this right here. Personal challenge leads to maximum change. I'm going to say that again. Personal challenge leads to maximum change. You know, Jesus called people out personally. He didn't say, hey, there's a big group of people there. Does anybody want to follow me? No, he said, hey, Peter, follow me. James, follow me. John, follow me. Nathaniel, I saw you while you were thinking about me earlier. And lots of times we think in church life, if we just give the big broad appeal that people will automatically do what we say. But you know the truth. If we put something in the worship folder that says, hey, we need 27 preschool workers, then everybody's like, oh, that's terrible. And then nobody does anything. Do you know the same is probably true in your Bible fellowship class? You're telling your people what they need to do, what they should do. And they're thinking, man, that's good for the person beside me. Hmm. And so we never actually coach people on how to individually grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. Well, I want to show you a little picture here. To care for your class, this is you right here. You're the shepherd of your class. Now, as a shepherd, you're supposed to pastor your class. You're supposed to shepherd your class to greener pastures. Well, you got different sheep in your class, don't you? Mm -hmm. You got a belly aching Bill right here. He sits there every week. Then you got positive Peggy. She's always happy about everything. Then you got nursery Nancy. You know, she's always in the nursery and it's hard to get her working in class because she's really working. And then you got, I sit here, Sam. And that means he never says anything in class, but that's his chair, and he's always faithful to be there. And then you got Sam's wife, Susan. Sam's wife, Susan's there because Sam's there. And then you got Bible Ben, and you can count on him for any Bible question. He can tell you the answer to it, and he's always Johnny on the spot, and you appreciate him in class. Then you got Never Move Nellie over here, and she's been there since 1983, and that's her spot. And then you got Potential Patrick. You know, you've been Patrick's really good at speaking, and you think, man, he could be a great Bible fellowship teacher one day, but he's never taken that leap to take the next step in what God would call him to do. Then you got social Sally. She's always talking and she's always making sure everybody has food and everything and she's glad to be there. You got uh, my class, Mike. Now my class, Mike, this is his class. And when you talk about starting a new class or class multiplication, he doesn't get that. He thinks that's of the devil and he doesn't like you talking about it. And then there's a uh, hymns, Hank, you know, hymns, Hank, he can't stand those new worship courses. And every week when you come in out of worship, you've got to hear about how you really didn't like what he really didn't like what brother Rob did this week. And why can't we just the old hymns anymore. That's a uh, hymns Hank. And then last, you know, you got Pharisee Fran. And Pharisee Fran knows what everybody else should be doing, but she doesn't necessarily ever apply anything to her life personally. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking at all these people in your class, yeah, they're all great people. They all love Jesus, but they all need shepherding in different ways. And so what I want to challenge you as a shepherd is, is first of all this, you need to know your people so well, you know them, you know their personalities, you know their families, they've been in your class a long time. And then I want to challenge you to shepherd them or give them a challenge for their future discipleship. I want you to specifically think, be praying for belly aching Bill. You know, he's been belly aching for so many years. Have you ever asked him why he's belly aching? Or have you ever just sat down and taken him to lunch and say, hey, hey, Bill, how can we help you grow in your relationship with Christ? Do you have a vision for belly aching Bill? What about positive Peggy? She's so positive. How could you use that in your class to help your class grow? Or, or maybe she needs to serve somewhere else because she's so positive. You know, Nursery Nancy, she's awesome. We need her. And maybe she can influence positive Peggy and Sam's wife, Susan, to serve in the nursery because they always need servants. Have you given her a vision for that? Have you given her a vision to help her help others? And then you got potential Patrick. He, he could do so much, but nobody's ever asking. And, and you put out that challenge, you know, they need workers in the nursery. They need, we need this and we need that. And it's so easy for people to say no to broad appeals. Look at this. It's easy to ignore a broad challenge. 
It's easy to say no when there's a broad challenge. Jesus challenged people individually, and I want to encourage you to challenge your class, your people in your class, individually. It is hard to say no to someone asking you to do something God has already asked them to do. Okay? Ooh. Let me say that again. Say it. It is hard to say no to someone asking you to do something God has already asked them to do. Mm. I'm not telling you to come up with people's life plan. I'm not telling you to give people a vision for uh, what God's called them to do. What I'm, what I'm asking you to do is ask them specifically to do what God has already asked them to do. And what you find is when you look people in the eye and you say, you know what? You know what, potential Patrick? I've needed a co-teacher for three years, and I really want our class to start a new class, but we don't have a teacher. Patrick, you, you're so good at knowing the Bible, and you're so good with people. You have a lot of potential. Would you consider being my co-teacher? You know, when you, when you make it specific like that, and you, you, you value Patrick as someone who has gifts and skills in the Lord, he's very likely to say, you know, I've never really thought about that. I'd like to maybe teach. So um, here's a question I want you to ask you yourself this week. How are you giving a personal challenge to each person in your class to take the next step of growth? Mm. How are you giving a personal challenge to each person in your class to take the next step of growth? Hey, here's what I want you to do this week. I'm going to ask you personally through this video. Mm -hmm. Would you write down your class members? And I'm not talking about the fringe people. I'm talking about the people that are, that are the, the bread and butter, the core of your class. And would you write down maybe a word beside each person? Like uh, maybe it's belly ache and Bill. You know, maybe maybe you have a vision for something that Bill could do. You know, he's always complaining about the parking lot. Maybe you could say to Bill, Bill, um, I really think you'd be great helping in the parking lot. Can I can I connect you with Brother Sterling this week and and uh, help you get plugged into that ministry? He might have never thought about that, and he's always complaining. But if you give him a way to be a change agent, mm. it might change him. It might change the church or the parking and, lot. And so if you could. Think about every person in your class, write them down on a list and put a word God gives you mm. that maybe you need to encourage them in. And we're not talking about anything magical or mystical. We're just talking about what the Bible says, you know, mm -hmm. love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Woo! So listen, mm -hmm. give them a personal challenge. Personal challenge leads to maximum change. Hey, mm. I love you. I hope you think about this in your class because there's a lot of potential sitting there in your class every week. It's not serving the Lord. And God's called them out, so why don't you call them out? We make disciples.